In this episode, we will uh, talk about that the Old Testament, the Torah, as Muslim claim, the Old Testament is claiming, is teaching the oneness, the true oneness, which is Allah and not the Trinity. And my brother Sam Shamoon is here with me from Answering Islam, and he will address that question. Brother? Yes, uh, the Muslims like to argue that the Quran is consistent with the Hebrew Scriptures, the Old Testament, and their conception of God not being a Trinity, triune God, unlike what Christians claim for the New Testament. And the reason why they bring that up is to show that the New Testament goes against the Old Testament, whereas the Quran perfectly fits the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Now their purpose in doing that is to get Christians to give up on Christianity, or at least the notion of the Trinity, and start, start worshiping God as a singular person. And this mm -hmm. is something I want to make clear. <clears throat> there are two forms of monotheism. There is Trinitarian monotheism and Unitarian monotheism. Mm -hmm. When Muslims try to argue that Islam is monotheistic and Christianity is not, the assumption is that for God to be one, he has to be one person. That's Unitarianism, that the one God exists as one person. Trinitarianism teaches there is only one God, but this one God, because his being is infinite, it's not limited to one person. There are three persons who exist as one God. So it's Trinitarian monotheism versus Unitarian Can monotheism. Can I ask you a question? Sure. So when you say Trinitarian mono monotheistic yes. or monote uh, monotheism. monotheism, isn't that a self-contradictory sta statement? How is that contradictory? When you say God is one, even that is a meaningless statement. One what? So when you tell me God is one, one what? One God, one being. What does that mean? So, one being. Now, why should God's being be limited to one person? On what basis do you say that for God to be one being, he can only be one person? Now, the only mm -hmm. thing you can tell me is because in creation, when we look at creatures, every creature that we see is not just one being, he's one person. So you're one being, one person. I'm one being, mm -hmm. one person. We're two beings. So how can you have one being who's more than one person? If a Muslim were to dare use that argument, he or she is committing shirk. S-H-I-R-K, shirk, which is the sin of associating creatures with Allah. How are they committing shirk? The Quran in agreement with the Bible. Now, I'm only quoting the Quran because they believe in the Bible. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I'm quoting the Quran because they don't believe in the Bible. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to use their Quran to prove the truth of the Bible. Mm -hmm. The Quran agrees with the Bible. There, there's nothing like Allah. Mm -hmm. Allah's unlike anything in creation. He's incomparable, incomparable. You can't liken anything to him. And there are two verses in the Quran that state this clearly. Chapter 42, verse 11 of the Quran, mm -hmm. and chapter 112, verse 4. Nothing comparable to Allah. In order for that argument to work, that means Allah's being is similar, if not identical, to the being of a creature. Mm -hmm. You've now committed shirk. It is true that as a creature, you can only have one being, one person. But why does that transfer over automatically to Allah if he's unlike anything in creation? So now you need to demonstrate to me from the revelation, what they call wahi, revelation that God is not just one being but one person. There they're going to have our time, not just from the New Testament. Mm -hmm. They're going to have our time from the Old Testament and they're going to have a hard time with the Quran because surprise, surprise, even the Quran doesn't teach there's a singular divine person. But we can talk about that in a future session. <clears throat> How do I deal with this argument? That the Old Testament presents a picture of God that's Unitarian, that God is not just one being one person. Very simply, quote the Hebrew Bible to demonstrate nothing could be farther from the truth. That's right. uh -huh. The Hebrew Bible itself lays the foundation for the New Testament revelation that there are multiple divine persons mm -hmm. that exist as one God, mm -hmm. one of whom is the Messiah. And in the Hebrew Bible, there are actually prophecies that the Messiah to come will be more than a man. He will be God in the flesh, distinct from God. We'll look at that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mention at least two divine figures besides the one we call the Father. Mm -hmm. The Jews agree, Jehovah or Yahovah or Yahweh, He is their Father in heaven. And we agree that God is a Father. Mm -hmm. But the same Hebrew scriptures testify that besides the one we call Father, there are at least two other divine entities, the Messenger of God and the Holy Spirit. Now I said Messenger of God. <clears throat> In the English translations, it's often translated as the angel of God. Now let me just define the term real quickly. The Hebrew word for angel is malach. Mm -hmm. Malach. Malach doesn't mean an angel in the sense of a creature with wings. Because when I say angel, what came, comes to your mind is a spirit creature with wings. That's not what it means. The Hebrew term and the Greek word, angelos, the words where we get angel, mm -hmm. 
In fact, angelos is, you know, angel sounds similar. Simply means a messenger. Someone sent with a message on behalf of another. Mm -hmm. So if I were to send you, in Greek, you'd be called my angelos. In Hebrew, my malach. Mm -hmm. And you find that's how it's used in the Hebrew Old Testament, Hebrew, Hebrew Bible, and in Greek Christian scripture. Because the New Testament is written in Greek. For example, one of the names of the prophets is malachi, malachi. Malachi okay. is my angel, but he's a human prophet. Why is he called an angel? Because it means messenger. Mm -hmm. So when I speak of the angel of God, I'm not talking about a spirit creature with wings. I'm talking about a figure who's the messenger of God, sent by God, who happens to be God. He's a messenger sent by God, so he's distinct from God. But at the same time, God calls him God. He's worshipped as God, and he claims to be God. I'll just give you a few examples mm -hmm. for the sake of time to what the, uh, the appetite of the audience to dig deeper into these issues because I have plenty of articles on answeringislam.net and on my YouTube channel, I've had video discussions, mm -hmm. Shamunian, that's a YouTube channel, where they can see the <clears throat> plethora of evidence, verse after verse, not just one or two mm -hmm. isolated instances. But for the sake of time, we'll look at a few where the angel is clearly said to be God, distinct from God. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Genesis 31, 10 to 13. Jacob is narrating a dream. Jacob, when the livestock conceived, I lifted up my eyes and saw in a dream that the male goats mating with the flock were striped, speckled, and spotted. The angel of God spoke to me in a dream. So he identifies it. That was the messenger of God. So he knows, right? Mm -hmm. Malach Elohim, right? The angel, which in English is more better translated messenger, so we don't confuse people. The messenger of God spoke to me in a dream saying, Jacob, and I said, here I am. He said, now lift up your eyes and see the male goats which mate with the flocks are striped, speckled, and spotted. For I have seen all that Lebanon has done to you. Lebanon's father-in-law was persecuting him, was deceiving him, was oppressing him. So the angel didn't say, God has seen your affliction. I have seen your affliction, and I've come to rescue you. I have seen all that Lebanon has done to you. I am the God of beth -il. The angel of God says to him, I am the God of the house of God. Beth in Hebrew means God, mm -hmm. Il, the house of God. Because Jacob had erected a pillar and called it the house of God. And he made a vow to Jehovah. If you deliver me and bring me safe, you'll be my God, I'll give you a tenth. Mm -hmm. The angel says, I was that God that you made a vow to. And that house is my house. I'm the God of the house of God. I am the God of the house of God, where you anointed the pillar, where you vowed a vow to me, now arise, get out of this land, and return to the land of your family. Who does this angel think he is? That he sees the affliction of God's people. He comes to their rescue. He comes to their aid. Mm -hmm. And he says, I am the God of the house of God. That house of God that you built to worship him, that's my house. I am that God. Who does he think he is? Let's go to Exodus 3. Mm -hmm. I'll just quote two more examples for the sake of time. Exodus 3, if you ask the Muslim and the Jew, who appeared to Abraham in the burning bush? They'll say God. Which person of God? Now, normally the Muslims will say, mm -hmm. well, the Muslims would say it was the angel Gabriel. They don't believe God appeared, even though Quran says it was Allah. The Jews may say it was an angel or a creature, but let's read, mm -hmm. according to Exodus 3, who appeared. Now, Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the far side of the desert and came to the mountain of God to Horeb. Exodus 3, mm -hmm. verses 1 to 6. The angel of Jehovah appeared to him, Malach Yehovah, appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush, and he looked, and the bush burned with fire, but the bush was not consumed. So Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. Now when Yehovah, the Lord Jehovah, saw that he turned aside to see, now notice who's, who's watching him from the bush. Mm -hmm. God called him from out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, and he said, here, here am I. Verse 2 says, it's the angel of Jehovah in the bush. Mm -hmm. But then it says, it was God in the bush that called him. Mm -hmm. Is there a confusion here? How can verse 2 say it was the angel, but then the later verse, <clears throat> verse 4 says, it was God. Because the angel is God, God is this angel. Mm -hmm. He said, do not approach here, remove your sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Mm -hmm. But verse 2 tells us the God that appeared to him, that he's afraid to see, the angel of Jehovah. 
So how could the angel claim to be the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? How could Moses, who wrote this, we believe he wrote the narrative, say, mm -hmm. that angel who looked at me was God who looked at me, and I was afraid to look at him because I was looking at God. Moses, why would you call this angel God? Because he's not a creature. But he's sent by God. Finally, Exodus 23, 20 to 21. And the evidence shows this is actually Jesus Christ in his pre-human existence. Mm -hmm. This angel is Jesus before he became flesh, appearing to the Old Testament mm -hmm. saints. Well, Exodus 23, 20 to 23, but we're only mm -hmm. going to read 20 and 21. Only 20 and 21. God is now speaking about the angel, speaking through Moses to Israel. Mm -hmm. Now it's God speaking about the angel. Indeed, I'm going to send an angel before you to guard you along the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. Be on guard before him. Now God is warning them. Be mm -hmm. on guard before this angel and obey his voice. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Do not provoke him. For he will not forgive your transgressions, mm -hmm. for my name is in him. Wow. Notice what God says about this angel. Do not get him angry. You better obey him, because if he gets angry, he will not forgive you of your sins, because my name is in him. Mm -hmm. Let's now unpack those two things. And also says, obey his voice. You better believe it. Mm -hmm. Similar to Matthew 17, 5, where mm -hmm. the Father says to the apostles, This is my beloved Son, whom I'm well pleased. Listen to him. That's right. Obey, obey him. him. Mm -hmm. And Jesus also in Mark 2, 5, looks at the paralytic and says, your sins are forgiven you. In Mark 2, 10, he says, the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. Mm -hmm. What the angel does, Jesus does, because it's the same person. Mm -hmm. So notice the two things. He says, he has the power to do what only God does, forgive sins or punish you for your sins. Mm -hmm. Why? My name is in him. Now, when you go back into the biblical understanding, the biblical context, when you speak of God's name, you speak of his authority, his essence, nature, mm -hmm. his characteristics. Mm -hmm. He's basically saying the reason why this angel can forgive sins is because he possesses my nature. He embodies my nature. What I am, in essence, he is because we are one. Mm -hmm. Wow. This is all Old Testament. Now, that's the angel of the Lord. Is there another divine person? For the sake of time, we'll make it quick. Yes, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit... Mm -hmm. The Ruach Elohim, the Spirit of God, Ruach HaKodesh, however you want to say it, because it's in Hebrew. He is identified as the Creator, mm -hmm. the Sustainer, Life Giver, <clears throat> who is actually worshipped as God. The Holy Spirit in the Hebrew Bible, Creator, Sustainer, Life Giver, who is worshipped as God. Mm -hmm. Where do we find that? Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. The first chapter of the first book of the Bible, the second verse. The earth was formless and void. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, mm -hmm. and the Spirit of God, Ruach Elohim, was moving over the surface of the water. Here you see the Spirit already active and now making the earth habitable. Because at this stage of the earth, there was, <clears throat> it was uninhabitable. Mm -hmm. It wasn't capable of sustaining life. So what did God do? He sent the Spirit to hover over it in order to now give it life, making the earth a place where life could occur, mm -hmm. making it habitable. So here you see God and His Spirit are active in creating and giving life to the earth, mm -hmm. showing the Holy Spirit is co-creator with God. This is further confirmed in Job 33, verse 4. Mm -hmm. Notice, Old, Old Testament, I didn't even quote the New Testament. Old Testament foundation for the Trinity in the New mm -hmm. Testament. Job 33, verse 4. The Spirit of God has made me. Wait, who made you? The Spirit of mm -hmm. God made me. And the breath of the Almighty gives me life. Now, the Spirit of God is the breath of God. The breath of God is the Spirit of God. Now, when we say the breath of God, God is not a physical being who physically breathes. That's a metaphor. Mm -hmm. It is describing the Spirit as God's breath in this sense. When you think of breath, you think of life. Because if you can't breathe, you die, right? Mm -hmm. So when we speak of the breath of God, we're talking about that entity that God sends forth to give life to creation. Mm -hmm. You need the breath of God to live. And who's the breath of God? The spirits. In other words, this is a poetic way of saying, it is the spirit of God that God sends to give life to all creation, mm -hmm. showing the Holy Spirit is creator and life giver. Mm -hmm. Again, two more passages. Psalm 104, 29, 30. This solidifies that the Holy Spirit is creator and life giver. <clears throat> mm -hmm. When you hide your face, Psalm 104, 29 and 30, they are troubled. You take away their breath. The Hebrew is ruach. You take away their spirit. So if he takes away your spirit, my spirit, we die. Mm -hmm. But now if he wants to make you alive again, what does he do? When you take away their spirit, they die and return to the dust. When you send forth your spirit, 
When he takes your spirit, you die. But when he sends his spirit, they are created and you renew the face of the earth. Wait, when God wants to resurrect and recreate the dead and replenish the earth, he sends the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit resurrects the dead, recreates the dead, revivifies the dead, and replenishes the earth. That sure sounds like the Holy Spirit is creator and life giver and sustainer. Finally, because our time is up, finally, mm -hmm. 2 Samuel 23, verses 1 to 3. Did David know that the Holy Spirit inspired him to write the Psalms? And did David know the Holy Spirit is God who speaks? Did he know this? Did David know that when he wrote the Psalms, it was the Holy Spirit who taught him what to write? And did he know that when the Holy Spirit spoke to him, that was God speaking? Yes. 2 Samuel 23, verses 1 to 3. Now these are the last words of David, the oracle of David, the son of Jesse, the oracle of the man who was raised on high, the anointed Mashiach of the God of Jacob, and the favorite psalmist of Israel. Now notice what he says. The Spirit of the Lord, Ruach Yahovah, spoke by me. Mm -hmm. So he, he realizes, the Spirit is the one speaking using my mouth. The words I'm speaking, mm -hmm. that's the Spirit speaking through my mouth. Mm -hmm. And his word, the Spirit's word is on my tongue, the God of Israel said, the rock of Israel spoke to me. So hold on, I'm confused. David, you just said it was the Spirit of God who spoke by you. Yes. But in the next verse, you're saying it's the God of Israel speaking, the rock of Israel, who's speaking to and through me. What are you trying to tell me, David? When the Holy Spirit speaks, God speaks. Because He is God. Mm -hmm. This is all Old Testament. Now, I have a lot more, but for the sake of time, I think this will suffice to whet the appetites of both the Muslims and the Christians, as well as the Jews, mm -hmm. to see the Old Testament does not teach oneness of Allah as understood by Muslims. It teaches Trinitarian monotheism, if you're going to be honest to what the scriptures teach. I believe that's quite enough uh, good of an explanation for us to know and see the Trinity in the Old Testament, even though the, the claim is that the Christians came up with the that's Trinity. Right. In it's the older. third or the fourth century <laughs> after Christ, but you actually, with the explanation you had, you can actually clearly see it in the Old Testament long before the existence. <coughs> Precisely. Of the